<clears throat> okay, hello. Uh, today is the 31st of um, May 2023, and it is the birthday of Three Hacker, a very important architect. And let's uh, read a little bit about him. Three Hacker, as you see, born May 31st, 1931, is a Polish born Israeli architect. His work is known for its emphasis on geometry and asymmetry. Well, this is what I took from Wikipedia. I think some more complicated and more complex. Zwi Hecker was born as Tadeusz Hecker in Krakow, Poland. He grew up in Poland and Samarkand. This is very interesting in Samarkand, which is a beautiful city. He began his education in architecture at the Krakow University of Technology he immigrated to Israel in 1950. There he studied architecture at the Technion Israel Institute of Technology, graduating in 1955. Uh, the Technion Aldar Sharon was a classmate and Alfred Neumann was their professor. Between 1955 and 1957, he studied painting at the Afni Institute of Art and Design before beginning his career as an architect. Between 1957 and 1959, Hecker served in the Combat Engineering Corps of the Israel Defense Forces. So he was born in 31, and he immigrated um, uh, to um, Israel in what year? Uh, I read here, but I, in 1950, so at 19. Yes, at 19, he left Poland for um, Israel. After his military service, he founded a firm with Eldar Sharon until 1964 and Alfred Neumann, the professor, until 1966. The physical and economic conditions in Israel at the time allowed them to complete a fair number of works in a relatively brief period of time, which brought international attention. The joint works include the Mediterranean Sea Club in Achisib, Ach Dubiner House, the Chaim Laskov Officer Training School, uh, Bahad, the main ofi officer training school at the Israel Defense Forces, just later the synagogue at the same academy, and the Bat Yam City Hall, 1963-1969. We are going to see some of these works. The design shares aspects in common with the metabolist movement from Japan, of course, borrowing metaphoric shapes from nature for use in planning morphological structures. The modularity of these works, such as the Dubiner House, provided an architectural precedent for the Habitat 67 project by Moshe Safdi. Hecker resides in Berlin and Tel Aviv, he has been involved in planning projects for the Germ German Jewish community, as well as other international projects. And this is the man. I like him. There are pictures even more uh, flattering than this one, but an interesting man. Uh, and uh, uh, his buildings are equals, equally so. So together with their professor, Alfred Neumann, Zvi Hacker and Eldar Sharon, they did this apartment house 1961-1964, so, you know, uh, almost, well, 65 years ago or so. Not bad. Uh, dramatic, sculptural, assertive, vigorous. I mean, if this building would be built today, we will salute it as a, you know, a vitalist work of architecture. I was built in uh, the beginning of the 1960s uh, in Israel. And not far from it, uh, a scandalous one, if we have to this, uh, call it so, the spiral house. But this is not bad. And again, this was built together with the professor, two former students, and Neumann, the professor. An apartment building. Concrete, of course. Danziger Laboratory Building, Haifa, Neumann and Hecker, student and professor. This one is not bad either, you know, in its uh, triangular, um, 
you know, rhythm and, and repetition and look at the, the drama of uh, certain uh, details, if we are to call them so. So if you employ geometry in a, in a, in a fresh, vital way, you, you could get a, a very sculptural, a very sculptural architecture. So yes, there is repetition here, but I wouldn't say it's a monotonous uh, repetition at all. Remote housing. Now here we are we are dealing with an interesting uh, work, you know, quite ample as as you can see, plenty of apartment buildings, but with a with a, a creative uh, arrangement, and um, I think it's it's uh, too bad I don't have too many uh, you know detailed views, but. Uh, from this image, we understand that if we compare what they designed then with what is here in the lower right corner, we see a big difference, no? Here we have assertive, creative architects who took risks, who preferred the dynamic architecture, and here we see no architecture, actually. And uh, the experiment with this particular um, uh, section of, of that urban, um, uh, you know, development, if we are to call it so. This one is uh, almost scandalous, and we are going to see more uh, pictures of this. This is, um, this picture actually shouldn't be here. It's a detail. I only wanted to show that, that he was um, very uh, uh, careful not to uh, neglect uh, tactility, so the tectonics of building were addressed. And by the way, uh, Lebia Sulz, whose birthday is also today, the 31st of May, in his blog uh, claims that, um, you know, a building by Zvi Hacker would find a more um, a connecting uh, role in a city or in a, you know, a settlement uh, than, let's say, a building by Zaha Hadid. Zaha Hadid's buildings are maybe jewels in themselves, maybe some of them, but they do not connect with the, you know, with the surroundings. They are independent works. It doesn't matter how extravagant some buildings by Zvi Hacker, they are easier to connect in some form with what surrounds them. A drawing, uh, explosive as it is. Now the spiral apartment house in Ramat, uh, this is a, a yeah, I think I don't think I'm wrong if I say it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a scandalous work, but I say it with affection and with um, with uh, admiration. This is the work, an apartment building, and you say it's crazy. No, it's not crazy, or it's not crazier than life. Life is also crazy. So you know, it's dynamic. It's spiral. It is based on the spiral, and he loves spirals. He also built us you know, a school in, in Berlin, uh, which is based on the spiral and use, uses the spiral in a dramatic fashion here also. And, uh, you know, the formal diagram uh, tells only part of its truth, the truth of the, of the building. It's just a diagram, but the building is much more eruptive and, and, and complex. Also because of its materiality. Maybe some people would not love to live in such a building. Maybe some people would love to live in, uh, you know, quiet, uh, rectangular, Cartesian uh, block of flats. You know, and to conform themselves to, you know, uh, Sorry, the telephone is ringing. Nobody is ringing the whole day. And now when I make the presentation, it's ringing. 
I'm not going to respond, of course. It's probably some credit card uh, company that tries to uh, finally stop. Okay. Now, you see this building. You cannot hang uh, uh, drying clothes on a building or in a building by Zaha Hadid. You just can't. But here you can. Here you can also make interventions, some of them uh, very ad hoc and very even unskillful. It's okay. Look at the interior of, uh, I mean, these are uh, modest apartments. This is a modest building. You know, look, look, look at the, the interior. You know, look at the walls, look at the window, look at the table, look at the chairs. And you say, uh, you know, what, how could it be, you know, an architect of fame uh, to build, uh, you know, such modest, uh, uh, you know, uh, apartments or, or, well, it's very possible. But what is uh, surprising is that he, he actually built a, 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 an intriguing and interesting and creative architecture for, uh, you know, uh, people without money and without glory and without fame. This is a detail of, uh, of the chapel uh, he built for the army. Uh, we are going to see, I hope, other images and that image shouldn't be there and I don't know why I placed it here. Uh, so back to the apartment building in Ramat, the spiral building, uh, back to some images or these images from that uh, urban, uh, you know, should I call it development. You can see the influence of Neumann. Neumann was very interested in, uh, you know, uh, repetition and strong geometry. And here we see that too. Autopia. Uh, this is a later work where he uh, you know, uh, played with the idea of a utopia in which uh, the automobile uh, was king. This is an image of the school in Berlin, and we are going to see other images um, of this building. Uh, quite a unique uh, school. Unfortunately, not as interesting seen from the level of the eye, but from the air, it does look uh, uh, agitating, to say the least. A fragment of, of, the, of the building he built where there are interventions by the inhabitants, you know, and, and this is a, a remarkable thing that uh, an architecture work that has personality and a strong personality allows for such interventions, irreverent interventions, you know, and, and I think that the architect would not have protested because he didn't want to build a pure architecture. Other the geometry used was pure in a sense, but because he welcomed life, even with its uh, problems and imperfections, uh, you can see in this image that uh, the building by Zvi Hacker allowed for such interventions. And this is not a, a little thing. This is a city hall he built when he worked with Neumann, his former professor, and is not bad either. Now, the Ramot Pauline apartment in East Jerusalem is this one with these, uh, uh, you know, polyeders that you would even ask, how could it be that people live there? Well, they live there. And it's not just there that something like this was built. You can see in the center of Rotterdam in the Netherlands, uh, something not very dissimilar. maybe the children are more intrigued by uh, by this kind of opening in the wall and by slanted walls than by rectangularity and Cartesianism and so on. Look at this. Here someone uh, made, a, made a maybe an illegal intervention. It's okay. The, the movement of the polyeders of the architect allows for such irreverent uh, uh, interventions. I think that's what Lebia Sutz tried to say, that a building by Zvi Hacker allows for interventions that come from, um, you know, uh, who knows who, in whatever form, and they are not uh, belittled by those interventions.
Now, we have to acknowledge it. How many apartment buildings look like this? How many apartment buildings, you know, uh, play with our uh, eyes uh, in this way? Not many. Uh, this reminds me of the little openings in the facade of the Institut du Monde Arabe by Jean Nouvel in Paris. Uh, but uh, Jean Nouvel used a whimsical mechanism to, which didn't always function and I understood, you know, the Arab world had to pay for all of that. Uh, but kind of based on the diaphragm of, uh, you know, uh, an analog uh, camera, which opens, um, you know, in order to catch something for a, for a, for a picture. Expo Tower in Osaka by Japan, in, uh, by Kionori Kikutake. Why do I show this work here? Because Kikutake is a metabolist architect and an important one, a very important one, also played with polyeders, and you can see here. So these architects in the 60s and 70s did some courageous work uh, you know, uh, courageous uh, uh, from various points of view. Uh, and um, I think they are to be appreciated. So here is Ki Kionori Kikutake, Osaka, 1970. And here is um, uh, Tzvi Hacker, around that time in, in Israel. Architecture is an idea uh, this is what Lebia Suits wrote about three hackers' architecture. The architecture is an idea, as an idea, cannot be limited to one of masterpieces, but should create an inspiring fabric of spaces and ways of living, a tapestry of human invention and aspiration. It is possible to imagine a vibra vibrant urban tapestry, a city, with many Tzvi Hacker buildings, while it is not possible to imagine the same with the singular buildings of, say, Saha Hadid. And I think he's right. And I like this fact that, again, you know, the purity of the original artwork or the, the original architecture is not diminished even when it is negated or confronted with interventions. It's almost like, let's say, uh, have a, having a very good painting where another painter, no, where someone else, even if not a painter, brings in some colors and some designs or some you know, this is almost unimaginable. But in architecture, as you can see here, there are interventions by non-professionals who, you know, you could say distort the distorted already architecture of Tzvi Hacker. And Tzvi Hacker welcomes them or allows them to, to do so. I think this is a remarkable uh, attribute. Because usually as authors of buildings, as authors of architecture, we are reluctant to accept that someone would, uh, would come and uh, splash some uh, his or her idiosyncrasies on our masterpiece. But uh, it depends, you know, this kind of architecture by Tzvi Hacker allows for interventions that uh, could come from any place and uh, uh, could uh, could have as an offer as an author anyone, and it's not just the uh, you know the the, the uh, idiosyncratic uh, other interventions, but also you know the gestures of uh, life as lived, like with you know hanging clothes. Uh, you know you'll never see hanging clothes on a building by Zaha Hadid, but here you can, and it's okay. It, it, it life and art. Um, you know, have a dialogue, maybe sometimes a little bit tensioned, but they do accept each other uh, within certain limits. And here he is, and I love the expression on his face. You know, 
real art and real architecture cannot be totally legal. <laughs> very, very nice. Let's read it again because I think this is very, very important for architecture and it is very, very important to fight off the inhibitions of so many architects who are tortured or students of architecture by all kinds of restrictions. You know, real art and real architecture cannot be totally legal. And don't forget, please, his smile, which is important by itself as well. Bravo, Zvihagat. Oh, I saw this picture and I like it. You know, it's 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 life as it is, not with glory, but in its uh, essence is, uh, is 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 true. With that plastic tablecloth, you know, and then you have the aspiration, the aesthetical aspiration of a uh, you know rather strange window. It's fine. All is well. Was it, uh, who said it? Marcel Breuer? No, I'm not sure. I, I made this uh, saying uh, uh, relating it to several people. Uh, you know, design is mine, uh, design is fine, history is mine. Something like this. Yes, design is fine, history is mine. Look, look at these windows here, you know, they, they are dancing, they are, they are playing, they are capricious, they are irresponsible, but irresponsibility is part of life, it's fine. Jewish school in Berlin, now this looks dramatic and very convincing in its drama from, from the air and in the drawings, but I think from the level of the eye, maybe he had to fight with the German authorities and probably there were rules and regulations it's a little bit too whitish and clean and so on. For my, from my point of view. The sunflower snake, Persephone, Berlin. This is what John Haydock, I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, Cooper Union. John Haydock was the glorious dean of Cooper Union for many years. And this is what he wrote about Tzvi Hacker's uh, uh, school, the Heinz Galinsky Schule uh, in, uh, in Berlin. Uh, in the uncube magazine uh, dot com, I think I found this uh, text, but uh, where is it? It was supposed to be there, maybe a little bit later. Sorry. Anyway, drawing studies, uh, studies for this school in Berlin. And this is the building as built, seen from, from the air. Um, I guess he was uh, rather reluctant to use, uh, to conform to the stringencies of the T-square and the rectangle, to put it mildly. Of course, he showed the tensions, the drama of the history of, uh, you know, the Jewish community within Germany, because, you know, after Second World War, you, you, you couldn't neglect what actually happened. So a uh, Jewish school in Berlin, um, you know, had to assume, you know, the shadows of what happened in the Second World War. Uh, maybe this building represents a tortured introversion, you know, the, the, the yes, the, the, the inner, the inner suffering, the, the, the drama that of this community, which was, uh, uh, as you know, uh, violently uh, destined for uh, destitution and uh, disappearance by the lover of whiteness and order who was uh, Adolf Hitler. You know, Adolf Hitler had no problem at all to commission and to advise Albert Speer to uh, make uh, visionary white magnificent uh, mega architecture for his empire of purity, of whiteness, while sending millions of people to the gas chambers. It's incredible, you know, building or imagining or desiring to build purity on the ashes of countless crimes and countless 
uh, blood on the redness of those killed, he wanted to build his, build his uh, uh, white magnificence. I'm talking about Adolf Hitler. Anyway, the school in Berlin, the anxious drawings of Zvi Hacker, the model, the building. Again, I, I, I think he, in Israel, he built a little bit better because there he didn't have uh, probably the, the, you know, the, the rules and regulations he had to conform to, at least to, to an extent. The building is much more dramatic from the top than from the level of the eye, in my opinion. Maybe if you would have used imperfections of concrete and the stone and even cracks and so on, it would have been better, but maybe it was not possible. Anyway, it's an interesting uh, school though, and rather unique. Snakes, zigzagging, uh, drama, knives. Three hacker. It would be interesting actually to compare this school with a Jewish museum by uh, Daniel Lipskin, also born in, born in Krakow. Uh, but instead of, uh, you know, choosing to live in Israel, choosing to live in the United States and later on in Berlin. Yes, these, these walls are too white. You know, some splashed color on them would have helped. Some graffiti artists. Yes, it's too, it's too, it's too quiet inside for my taste and for, for, for the taste of the architect if we judge him based on, on the building seen from, from above. Yes, too clean, too white. The Jewish Cultural Center in Duisburg, Duisburg, Germany, 1996, 2000. I do have to say something. I saw some late works by, by Zvi Hacker. And like in the case of some Japanese architects, very revolutionary in their early years of practicing architecture, uh, Zvi Hacker also became a little bit, maybe, you know, trying to win a competition or to, uh, you know, uh, uh, have a more peaceful dialogue with some clients. His architecture became less interesting and, in my opinion, uh, almost, uh, in some cases, rather not mundane, but a little bit commercial and... Uh, Something happened, I, I can only regret. But this work is good. From 1993 to 1998, the Museum of History, Palmach in Tel Aviv, is this building here. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a building which uh, uh, is not too assuming. And it's, it, I like very much its uh, tectonics and its tactility because because he avoids those clean surfaces that we saw with the Jewish school in Berlin. It's not bad, it's a good building. And you see, although it's a large building because it's not too tall and because of its geometry, it's not uh, you know, crushing the landscape or uh, anything, the neighborhood. <coughs> This is the plan. I hope I just yeah. This is the plan of the museum. I see some, uh, you know, not maybe not real quotations from the museum built by IMP in Washington D.C. But in the plan, I do see some uh, uh, connections with that work by IMP. I I I don't know if it was 
I think I am pay bit built it before, uh, before uh, as we hacker. Uh, you know, like two interlocking op opposing triangles. Here, one triangle is less uh, uh, discernible than the other one, but. Uh, Once I did uh, take part in an exhibition uh, in which uh, Tzvi Hacker was uh, present too in New York, uh, Adam's House in Paradise, he sent a work to that exhibition, which was a call for entries, and I did too. And uh, we were both present uh, in, a, in a rather small gallery, but it was an excellent exhibition, Adam's House in Paradise. You can check it on the web and probably see some of the works. I like this museum that it is not imposing, is not, uh, you know, uh, almost screaming, I am a museum. It is a museum, it has a level of monumentality, but, but because of its diagonals and its openings in the, in the big walls and so, it, it's, it's, um, it, it's not centralized and it's not monolithic. It's open towards the city. And again, I like very much the, the texture, the, the tectonics of the, of the, of the world. I don't know this where exactly this is, but this is rather interesting and almost strange. I'm not sure if it's, I myself puzzled. I don't know if it's part of the same building, but whatever it is, <laughs> I like it very much, even if it's not by Tzvi Hacker. So the, the materiality of architecture is also immensely important because you could have the same geometry, but, but the materiality of the walls or, or the surfaces in general, the, you know, the slab under your feet or the, you know, the ceiling, the, all these things matter very much so. Uh, all of a sudden, this wall communicates something, is plastically engaging, is alive. And here is the architect maybe around eight years old or so. And the drawing. And these are some uh, newer works, you know, for competitions. Uh, I guess he had some troubles to get commissions later in life, but he did build a lot, build a lot <clears throat> both when he was younger and later by himself. Younger when he worked with the professor Neumann and uh, his other colleague, uh, another uh, foundation of the school, a pastel drawing. Uh, here he is again. You can tell he was he is a dreamer. Actually, you know, uh, you can see on his face that he is a dreamer, a seer in a society of blindness. Maybe here he is again, the man born in Krakow and uh, educated there for a while. And then uh, he has a Pentax camera, an analog camera on the table, but I don't know if it belongs to him, maybe to the person on his right. I like architects who are heroes. I, I, I like architects who are pioneers. I like architects who think by themselves. And he was, he is a man who thought things by himself. 
Now the city hall in Bat Ayam in Israel, this is an early work, very early work by him and his excellent. He worked with Neumann here. And, uh, you know, I, I find it almost revolutionary in its uh, uh, explicit geometry and rotations. Um, it, has, it has a regularity, of course, it's based on the square, but it's a unique uh, city hall. There is none other like this one in the world. And of course, ornament exists because here we see those rotated squares, which are ornamental. Now I look at the roof. If Le Corbusier worked with Yanis uh, Xenakis on the roof of the Parliament Assembly Hall building in uh, the Parliament building in Chandigarh for, uh, let's say, some kind of a cosmic architecture on the roof, here we could say something almost similar. I don't know exactly what is the role of those, uh, you know, fantastic uh, geometries on the on the roof of the city hall, but uh, I welcome them. It's not Shambor where the fireplaces, the chimneys are so dramatic, but it's still a lot of uh, uh, drama here, and maybe who knows, even some symbolism, some reference maybe to some esoteric. Uh, astronomy or astrology or who knows what. City Hall, this is what you get when you have a creative architecture and when you have creative architects. They do something that surprises you and I think we all like surprises. Sometimes even, you know, uh, bad surprises. Better bad surprises than no surprises at all, maybe. City Hall, 50s, in the 50s. The children play here. Of course they play because the building is playful as well. Although based on a very strong uh, geometry, but a manipulated geometry, a rot rotated geometry, a synagogue. Now this synagogue, which is a, I called it the chapel, sorry. It's a synagogue in the Neg Negev uh, desert in Israel, 1967-1969, for the army. Look at this. It's incredible, no, that it was built for the, for the, for the army, the Israeli uh, army, and you are going to see also pictures from the inside. I don't know who built the building on the left, but the one on the right is by Tzvi Hacker, probably with uh, Neumann also. Why couldn't one also do, you know, uh, playful uh, architectures for the army? And here are the soldiers quite welcoming the, you know, slanted wall because it's much easier to stand up supported by a slanted wall than a vertical wall. And the soldiers accommodated themselves quite uh, uh, naturally to the surroundings. Not bad. It's almost the interior of a science fiction movie or, uh, uh, you know, uh, James Bond movie or who knows what. And it's actually a synagogue, a small synagogue in the desert for the army uh, by these uh, creative uh, architects who didn't forget that they are indeed architects. That's what this architect is supposed to do, to create the new in building.
So again, <clears throat> this was built almost 60 years ago. Color is present as well. Also this one, an addition uh, to an Arab village near Jerusalem, 1962, an excellent work, working with a very limited budget, but doing a, a sensitive uh, uh, work, uh, a vernacular work. Tzvi Hacker, 1962, an Arab village. Uh, we know that uh, Marcel Yanko, he loved uh, Arab villages and he tried to save those who uh, need to be saved. Here we see Tzvi Hacker sensitive himself to the Arab condition and uh, working, uh, I would say, uh, very, very well for this Arab uh, village in Israel. And look at the interesting site plan. You know, the houses are rather, you know, they're almost like modules. You know, they are, they are very similar to each other. But look at the plots of uh, land. So it's very possible with modest means to do good architecture. And even if you are extravagantly creative, you can still get inspired by the spirit of a place and appreciate vernacular architecture and do a so-called modern architecture that is uh, not offensive towards what is called um, uh, vernacular uh, architecture. You can tell they are very small, uh, you know, habitable units. Uh, look, look how small is the kitchen, you know, and you enter the bathroom from the kitchenette, from the small kitchen. And, and yet it works and it has the dignity of architecture. Sorry about this. You saw this is like an ad, <clears throat> ad memoir at the end of the presentation, not very well structured. Sorry about it, but maybe in a way, in a strange way, appropriate for Tzvi Hacker, you know, zigzagging. So, we know what the Latins said, ars longa vita brevis, art is long, life is short. But Lebia Suds, about whom we talked uh, earlier, uh, change things around. He said, you know, uh, ars, uh, 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 he said, uh, ars brevis vita longa. So art is short and life is long. I think they are both correct. Life is short and art is long. Art is short and life is long. They nourish each other. I, I don't think it's possible to, to, to accept life without art. Nor could I accept art without life. They need each other. I think when God made the world and generated life, he also thought of art and artists. They had to. They had to be present. Maybe we could say like this, that uh, from a Christian um, vision, um, you know, the beginning started like this. So you, okay, first was made the man, Adam, although we could very well imagine that first was made the woman. And then 
and then Adam was made from the bone of uh, of Eva. Why not? Let's let's think like this: that maybe Eva was made first and then Adam, but but after them the artist came. He had to come, or she had to come. The artist had to come because to leave Adam and Eve alone on this earth without an artist. A he or a she, it would be would it would be unbearable. I like this picture very much, you know, very much. I mean, look at that, uh, you know, extravagant architecture, and this this gentleman, you know, passing by, concentrated, looking forward in his direction, and the building looks towards the sky, towards the sun, maybe, and is this intermingling of. Uh, you know, in a way, two realities. And this can be seen these days also in China, where you can see, you know, ancestral workers working with very primitive tools and then not far away from them, a building by mad architects. A school, the school in Berlin, drawings, drawings, the spiral building, um, a little bit disordered my presentation, I apologize, but I think we, 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 we did pay a, an homage to uh, Sphi Hacker today. He made a project for the Royal Dutch Military Police in Amsterdam, but he didn't win the competition. In my opinion, he became a little bit too so-called civilized and clean and, uh, you know, in a way too conveniently uh, um, disposed to compromise with society and with, I understand in a way, but I, I prefer the buildings built in Israel. Anyway, he didn't win and he didn't build it. The Netherlands. The Poly Solidarity Center, <clears throat> another work for competitions, a later work by Zvi Hacker. This is uh, actually a building for a, a proposal to um, uh, create uh, an addition to the famous uh, uh, public library in Stockholm by uh, um, Gunnar Asplund, a truly very important uh, building by this great uh, Swedish architect, uh, this, uh, this building. And there was a competition to, um, you know, add an extension to the library. And this was the proposal of uh, Zvi Hacker. Fortunately, the winners, it wasn't Sri Hacker, uh, the, the building was not built in the end, and I'm, I'm glad it wasn't because it, it wasn't great. Uh, it was a, a wrong choice. There were better buildings, better projects, which were not awarded, and the one that was awarded uh, didn't deserve to be awarded, and after some years, uh, the, they decided not to build it, and I think it was a good decision. Anyway, these are later works by uh, Zvi Hacker. Here we see Piranesi, uh, etching by Piranesi on the left on the same uh, presentation board with uh, uh, the plants and the section of the spiral uh, or sunflower building that we saw. Other drawings by him. Personally, I'm not so fond of his later works. But maybe I should study them more carefully before making, uh, uh, you know, dangerous assessments. What is this? Batumi acquiring design, another competition entry, I guess, or some kind of a response to a commission, but was not built. This was built, we saw it, um, apartment buildings uh, early on in his career, uh, an exhibition with his drawings. Drawings, drawings, what would we do? What would architects do without drawings? But very few people, um, you know, these days draw by hand in such a way because we draw with uh, Photoshop and with all kinds of digital techniques and tools. 
is he a visionary architect? To an extent, maybe the word visionary is too ambitious and too far reaching. He's an architect who tried to honor architecture with his best and uh, to make as few compromises as possible. And for this, I think he has to be admired. Let's also not forget he studied painting after he studied architecture, which means he also had, you know, an interest in uh, art beyond architecture. The tension between architecture and art is known. You know, architecture at its best becomes art, but it's a little bit different from art because it is used or usable. And Brinkush was only in part correct when he said architecture is an inhabited or inhabitable sculpture. I, I, think, I think they are distinct. Architecture is a little bit different from sculpture. It's not just because it is inhabitable. But we can forgive uh, Brinkush for making uh, this uh, statement. The city hall that we just saw, we saw, and again, the spiral sunflower building, the museum, uh, one of the earliest uh, housing, uh, you know, apartment buildings. And here we see the two, the, the early work and then the newer work. Here he worked alone and here he worked with Neumann. the school in Berlin and here he is. I, I love his smile, <laughs> you know, and I like, I like the room and, uh, you know, th this is a man who understood that uh, to be alive means to be true to yourself and to, to even smile sometimes. Hello, Mr. Tzvi uh, Hacker. You know, again, <laughs> Real art and real architecture cannot be too totally legal. Please, please do not forget this. Real art and real architecture cannot be totally legal. Uh, here is uh, what? It was uh, the Cooper Union, uh, I guess, a lecture by him. Hacker, work of architecture. The spiral apartment we saw, what am I doing here? I'm repeating certain themes. Uh, sorry about the disorder of my presentation, but we see other pictures at least. The dramatic apartment building, uh, one of the most dramatic ever built by modernity. And look what's going on on those, uh, you know, uh, surfaces. Uh, uh, those ceilings. Ah, the spiral is too explicit. There is more life here. That's it. So let's wish him happy birthday and thank you for being here today.